Alan, we want to welcome you to the program. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's it's happening because of the uh, tragic death yesterday of uh, Prince, and uh, you're one of the folks that uh, has had uh, a lot of insight and, and time taken to uh, gain that insight on what Prince and who Prince really was. Uh, former writer for Rolling Stone, editor in chief of Vibe and Spin magazines, but uh, you you wrote the uh, the book "Let's Go Crazy: The History of the Making of uh, Prince's Movie." There, a uh, Purple Rain. <sighs> Your your thoughts and feelings this morning when you well actually let's back up to yesterday when you first yeah. heard the news that Prince had passed. Well, just you know, shocked and, and devastated as much as everybody was. Um, you know, to lose the the towering musical genius of his generation. Um, you know, at, at fifty seven years old, um, I don't think it's anything any of us were prepared for. Um, you know, this was somebody who was on stage last week, still performing. Um, you know, no reason to believe that with, you know, with still so much future and so much uh, creative potential in front of him that he was going to get taken away from us. So it's, you know, it's, it's horrible and it's, it's nothing that, uh, nothing you prepare for. Prince was a unique uh, soul in, in so many ways. Uh, I, I would imagine you probably knew more of what he was like uh, uh, as a, a person, but as an artist and as an uh, innovator in the musical world. Uh, he, he blazed a path that, uh, w- what drove him the directions that he went in, in how he wrote music, how he presented music, uh, how he performed on stage? Well, I think what drove him was, I mean, I've never been around anyone who had music just pouring out of them you know, 24 hours a day, every single day. Uh, he really constructed a whole universe that was set up to enable him to create uh, whenever and wherever he wanted to, to record, to perform, you know, at moment's notice, just because he, he heard something in his head. Um, so, you know, I think what drove him was this, this need to create, to, to constantly evolve, um, to really pursue... Uh, whatever you know, whatever uh, direction his his brain was hearing, um, I don't think he was capable of turning that off. Um, and with that came this real sense of independence and risk taking and bravery, um, and you know, setting an example that you you don't worry about your audience's expectations. You know, to be an artist means you're you're changing and you're growing and you're always looking forward. Well, this morning and, and last night and this morning, I'm sure through uh, the weekend, if, if not for, uh, longer, the world has gone purple. And uh, Purple Rain, when he put that movie together, I mean, it was a movie, it was a song, it was uh, it was kind of an autobiography, but it was early in his career when, uh, when he still had so much more that uh, eventually we got a chance to enjoy. Uh, talk about the making of the movie, where, you know, where it was made. I mean, it was made at home for him, correct? It was all made in Minneapolis, um, and, you know, the, the amazing thing, looking back on Purple Rain, I think that, you know, now we feel like there was something inevitable, there was going to be something that was going to take this genius and, you know, take him out to the whole world, but at the time, if you look at it, I mean, it makes no sense that this movie actually got made, and you know, this was a kid, he had a couple of hit singles, you know, he had Little Red Corvette, but he was not a big mainstream celebrity star, um, and he went to his managers and said, you guys will get me a movie deal or you're fired and I will find somebody else who can. And he had a, an absolute clear vision of what he needed to do to translate his music and his image and his story and take that out across the world. Nobody around him, you know, his own band said, you know, you're not, you're not Mick Jagger. You don't just decide you're going to go make a movie and be a star. And they put this thing together with, you know, he, he's the lead. He's never acted before. First time director. The cast is mostly his band. And they're going to shoot in the winter in Minneapolis. <laughs> I mean, what part of that sounds like, oh, that's going to be a big blockbuster. It sounds ridiculous. You know, it seems like that would be a disaster. But, you know, the movie opened. They made back their money opening weekend. Uh, he won an Oscar. And it, you know, it, it, it catapulted him to become one of the biggest stars in the world. And he knew that. He had the, that vision. He had that ambition. To him, he was just executing against the game plan, even when nobody around him, you know, even, even understood what he was talking about. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing when you're dealing with somebody who really can, you know, can see, the, 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 can see their future like that. 
Let me let me ask you two quick questions. I know you've got more to uh, talk to around the world. Uh, question number one, real quick, is any knowledge of what he was like uh, as uh, a person away from the limelight? Uh, was there any difference from what we saw portrayed in the limelight? Sure. Well, you know, I spent a, a, a good bit of time with him, um, and obviously that was as a journalist. It's not entirely on his own personal time. Um, you know, what was always surprising about him is, on the one hand, this was somebody who I saw do, you know, three costume changes on the day that he didn't even have a show. You know, he never let the image drop, the character drop. He was, you know, that he, he was, that's who he was 24 hours a day. But, you know, at the same time, when you'd sit down and talk to him, you'd remember, oh, right, this guy's not a space alien. Um, he could be very normal to talk to and talk about, you know, the NBA, talk about new movies that were out, talk about music that you're listening to. And, you know, it wasn't quite like hanging out with your friend who lives down the street, but there was this side of him that was, a, you know, a guy who grew up in Minneapolis and stayed, you know, sort of grounded and in touch with the world, uh, even if on his own terms. Um, you know, that was always the, the surprising side, wasn't the, the superstar side, and wasn't being able to see the incredible musical gift that he had. Um, the surprise was, the, you know, just remembering that this was a, a guy you, you, you could sit and talk to, uh, and, and it wasn't like, uh, you know, transmissions from outer space. Alan, I'm going to end it right there because I know you've got to uh, talk to others. I thank you very much for joining us this morning. It's Alan Light, uh, author of the Let's Go Crazy. I'm sure that is going to be uh, reread by so many uh, through the weekend here. Thank you for joining us, uh, unfortunately, for a sad occasion. And uh, we'll talk again, hopefully, sometime for a happier time in the future. Yes, thank you so much, and, and have a good day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.